Katie, Andy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. You know, it's funny, in all the years you guys have been associated with Liberty Women's Basketball, in, in various capacities, Katie, for you, um, I don't know that we've had, we've, we've had interviews before, certainly, Katie, after games and stuff, we've yeah. talked, and, and Andy, you've kind of filled in a, a time or two over the years for Coach Green. Um, on a, I don't know if it was a pregame or a postgame or what, but I, I do remember that we've talked before, but we really haven't talked about anything other than basketball. Like it's always been kind of basketball related stuff. So today's going to be fun because we're going to, we're going to find out your social security numbers, oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> bank accounts and uh, passwords. Um, no, we'll find out a little bit more about kind of what, what makes you guys tick. But bef- before we get into all that, uh, I could read off a bio, but that's not any fun. Tell us, in, in both of your words, how you got to Liberty, what year that was, if you want to give that away. You don't have to, uh, because most of you, you've been in, I mean, you're, but you got here when you were five, so it's like you're still very, very young, <laughs> but you've both been in town for, for a while, off and on a little bit, but you've both been around for quite a while. Katie? Me first. Um, so, yes, I played here uh, at Liberty from 01 to 05 uh, for Coach Green. And he's the one that recruited me to come play. Um, so I've known him for, I mean, came in 01, so he recruited me 99. Um, so known him for a little while. Um, and then played professionally for a while after school, after college. Um, I retired from playing professionally in 2012. How old were you when you retired? Because that seems so strange to say. I said I was going to play until I was 30, and I made it to 30. Uh, The Chinese league that I was playing for wanted me to play after 30, and I had to tell my agent, please stop, tell them to stop contacting me. I'm not going to sign this contract anymore. I'm 30. (laughs) Um, So I retired when I was 30, uh, and then I coached in uh, the NAIA in Michigan for a while after that. Um, and then moved to Virginia. I worked at LCA for a year, um, just to get the boys. I have two boys at that time. They were about two. Jace was almost two and Liam was four. Um, so I got them transitioned for that year. Um, got them settled away from their grandparents here in the state of Virginia. And then coach Green called and, uh, asked if I'd like to come on staff. So I did that. That was in 19, right? 2019, 18, 19. Um, and yeah, been here ever since. Loved it. It's a great, great job. Great being back. Um, you know, Liberty is a special place. We say that all the time. Um, but it truly is. And it's a family atmosphere here, um, across the board. And it's, it's always fun to come back and to see old faces that you went to school with that have hung around. Uh, Let's say familiar Familiar faces. Familiar faces. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I that happened. He's saying in... that because of himself. Oh, did I say old faces? You said old faces. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, familiar. No, familiar faces. No, because I, I, I made that same mistake when it was alumni weekend. I, I said to Coach Green, I was like, oh, there's going to be some old faces. Let me rephrase that. There's going to be some familiar faces. <laughs> okay. Nobody's old. Everybody's I'll take just that. familiar. I'll take that. Uh, Andy, how about you? Whew. Katie was talking about years or numbers, and I thought, oh, goodness. Um, I got here in 2007, 2008. Um, That was my first season. So right now I'm wrapping up year number 17 here with Coach Green. Um, Yeah, Time flies. Because I don't say, well, like, oh, wow, you're getting old. I'm just, I say it like. Thank you. You just did the same thing. (laughs) I know. I know. But Alexis was the same Mm -hmm. year as well, right? Yep. Yep. For at least the women's side. Um, he was here for two years prior to that on the men's side. Um, but yeah, it really has gone pretty quickly and the years, they just blend together. Um, I came here from, um, Valparaiso university up in Indiana and I'm from Michigan as well as Katie. Um, and Valpo was about an hour away from home. I spent two years there, um, Three years prior to that, uh, I was at a Division II university in Pennsylvania called Gannon University. Um, I love my boss from there. I love, yeah. And then uh, before that, I spent two years in uh, Savannah, Georgia at Armstrong Atlantic State, which actually they have since merged. I feel like the school, I'm not sure if the actual school has closed, but um, 
they got rid of their athletics, which they were actually really good, um, and merged with, I think, Georgia Southern. So that's kind of strange to me. Um, so yeah, been coaching for quite a while. Um, I am a coach's kid. My dad is actually in the Michigan, um, let's see, Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan. I was like, what is it? BCAM. Uh, Hall of Fame up there. So he coached for, uh, I don't even know how many years, a long time. Um, but he's been retired for a handful of years now, even though he went back into junior high coaching to coach my niece. And oh. uh, he was going to coach my nephew this year, but, uh, but um yeah, circumstances. <laughs> so that's cool. So now your family, both of your families, everybody is into sports. Everybody's mainly into basketball. Katie, on your your sister kind of preceded you here at Liberty. So that was, I'm, I'm sure that was the original connection to, to knowing about the university. But aside from that, how intense were those backyard one-on-one pickup games growing up? So I have an older brother. Uh, he's about six years older than I am. And he would always have friends over, and they always thought that they could beat us. And so there's a, his best friend, Eric Lonsma, um, would always come over. He, Eric is very, um, as a point guard, let's just say that. <laughs> That's a nice um, way of saying he's short. <laughs> I nice. said point guard. I like it. I like and it. he would always come over and point we guard. would play a lot because um, he always thought he could beat us. Um, and I don't think he ever did. But wow. Mary Beth and I, we would play one-on-one, but we would more so shoot and rebound for each other um, in the backyard in the driveway. Hoop still up right there in the driveway. Same hoop. No um, kidding. Yep. So it's kind of fun to go back and, and actually play. Um, or shoot and try to play. Um, but yeah, so we would play against my brother's friends more so than each other. And, and they couldn't beat you. No, I'm not going to say that they did. That's gotta be it. <laughs> At some point they would, you would think they would stop trying. You would think, but I think the male <laughs> ego when you're young thinks that they can keep trying and trying and trying and just couldn't do it. That's a great story. <laughs> Did any competitive uh, games in your backyard growing up, Andy? Um, I would say yes. Not not a lot. It would be more like horse and stuff because there were three years difference between my sister and I, and she unfortunately got my dad's height and I got my mom's height. So um, just different positions. So I just I was always pretty uh, quite a bit younger. Um, but I mean, we played basketball, kick the can, whatever with, (laughs) um, kids in the neighborhood. So we did a lot of, a lot of playing outside back then. Um, geographically, how close were you guys to each other in Michigan? An hour and 15. Yeah. East, west away or north, south away? North, south. So, so maybe just a little bit worse winners, no, pretty much the same. The whole the state's same. pretty much the same. Okay. Because if, it, well, here, if there's an hour difference between, say, Charlottesville and Lynchburg, they may get 10 inches of snow and we may get rain. So there's so much of a variance in this part of the country. But I guess pretty much if you, if you get above Ohio, yeah. it's pretty much all the same. I mean, it varies too. I actually live right on the lake and she's in off the lake about mm, three minutes. Yeah. So. It's you got your lake effect snow. Um, I kind of like to say mountain effect a little bit here yeah. sometimes, but um, like my house is literally up on the bluff, and then it might snow like two blocks in, but then it'll skip our whole town and it'll go inland a little bit. So that could happen to it could happen to us too. Yeah. So moving here was a great weather improvement. Depends on who you ask. Okay, who, who who are we asking? My children uh, would be very upset. Snow. But no, wait snow. a minute. They want snow. They just they just enjoy snow because it doesn't get you out of school as easily up there as it does well, down here. Well, they were here. too young to know that. Oh, uh, okay. So they're thinking that in Michigan, they never go to school. Right. Well, in, <laughs> and then here, it's like they just want to play out in snow and go sledding. And then they do miss snow or miss school if there is a chance of snow here. So they right. think snow, no school. Um, but they, they just want to play in snow. 
we went to Fargo. We went to my sister's house in Fargo over Christmas. She lives in Fargo. And they were all excited because they always get so much snow. And they're like, we're going to play in the snow. We're finally going to see snow. And we get there and it's like the first winter in however many years that there's no snow. <laughs> I say, sorry, guys. <laughs> I can't do anything about it. it. Well, see, that's the point where you can't. You, you should blame it on them. So yeah. it's obviously you're the common denominator. Wherever you go, yeah, there's no their snow. Fault. It's always their fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How is your sister? She's doing very well. She's got four kids of her own. Um, they're all in school now. Her youngest is three weeks younger than my oldest. So Liam is nine. Cora is nine. But they're three weeks apart. Gotcha. And if I remember right, uh, Mary Beth's... A husband, Seth, right, Seth, yep. was a, a quite a tall individual himself. Yep, he's as tall as he's tall as well. So I'm assuming the kids are. They're all very, very large individuals. <laughs> 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 they, I mean, we we don't see anything different. You know, that's just part of our family. Like that's just normal. Um, but yeah, they're all way taller than they sh- they should be at their age. So perspective of the family, not a big deal. Perspective of, of the other kids yeah. in elementary school. It's a little bit different. A little bit different. Yeah. I guess because those that maybe don't know the program that well, and especially those that are listening on the podcast and they're not seeing the video, we probably should say, you guys like we could give your, your heights to everyone so that that they can have the perspective. Are you offended? No. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm 6'8". I'm 5'4". Are you really? <laughs> was that a... Are you really that tall? Or are no, you... I didn't know how tall she was. Okay. Okay. I could see... And so your sister was... How how tall was your sister? I'm nine. Okay. So that, that's a that's a pretty big difference in the basketball world. I mean, you're, you're pretty well locked into point guard at 5'4". And she has a little bit of variety there she probably can't play a five but she might be able to in some states you could probably play a four if, if, if you're in a school district that they don't have a, a lot of height where i grew up five nine probably would be a four for women's basketball i'm, I'm assuming katie where you grew up five five did i say five four five nine five nine, nine would be a, five, a four yeah we're all pretty tall in michigan <laughs> well i mean where i grew up Holland. Holland, we're taller. But they're still, they're still, you have to, yeah, everyone needs a point guard. Everyone needs someone that's 5'4". Absolutely. You can't have a good team if you don't have a 5'4 point guard. Someone to pass you the ball. Yeah. Dribble between their legs. Right. Get out the other side and throw a dime. <laughs> Andy, who who was your, like, inspiration growing up uh, as far as, on the men's or women's side of things, watching basketball on television. Ooh. Um, okay, you're throwing it way back. <laughs> That's fine. I'm old enough that I don't really remember some things, but at the same time, um, I mean, I grew up around the game because my dad was a high school, actually girls um, and boy, boys when I was younger, and then girls as well, coach. Was he both? Gosh, now I don't even remember. Um so I just was in the gym all the time. Uh, I don't. I don't really remember if there was any particular player. Um, besides, as I got a little bit older, obviously, like I said, my sister was uh, three years older than me and had a very successful high school career. Um, but I think growing up in the gym and actually, we, my sister and I, did stats, took stats for my dad's teams. Um, so you know, fourth grade, third grade, fifth, sixth, all that keeping stats it kind of one of the things that we talk a lot about um recently with the with our team is um the ball is only in your hands like Mm -hmm. less than five percent of a game for any one person and actually a point guard it's going to be about five percent and everybody else is even less than that during the course of a game so we talk about the 95 percent is really important and that long story because i think keeping stats made me realize that there are a lot more important things than scoring you know whether it's um, getting a good defensive play or a steal or a um, assist. So I didn't really put value in just scoring and just those the things that most people look at. I, I, the reason I asked that question, um, I think a lot of guys that 
are a little bit undersized for the sport. They look at someone, now this is my generation, they would look at someone like Spud Webb or Muggsy Bogues that had successful NBA careers and they were really undersized. I mean, beyond I just, you know, if you're if you're a guy and you're 5'9", you feel like you're undersized. They were probably about your height. Muggsy mm-hmm. Bogues was probably about 5'4", something so. like that. Um, on the women's side, I think of players, and this was probably just a little bit before you would have been watching a lot of basketball, but Kim Mulkey, who's obviously gone on to do even more successful things as a coach, she was kind of an undersized point guard, but was just, you know, just had like a, just that fire and tenacity that she was going to be successful at whatever she did. So I was, I was kind of curious, like in, in that, in your generation, like what was that player that everyone kind of looked up to? I know, Pat Summit had some great players during her time at, at Tennessee in the 80s and 90s, and so that would have probably been around the time you'd have been watching a lot of basketball. Yeah, I just feel like we were really busy with our own stuff that we didn't, I mean, I don't think I really watched it on TV that much back then. Katie, was there... I don't remember. A, a, <laughs> Again, I'm a little older. <laughs> um, I mean, there were some really um, gritty players that went on to play college basketball for my dad in high school. So, I mean, just seeing some of them, um, I guess I, that's the only thing I can really So you had some of. inspiration at, yeah. at practice whenever mm-hmm. you would go watch your dad. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of cool. Katie, how about you? Was there a post player that you looked up to as a kid? I just remember watching, you know, um, Chicago Bulls was their era mm, yeah. where they won I was a Bulls all the championships. And I remember watching – them play um, more so than anybody else. And, um, you know, Den- Dennis Rodman is the all-time greatest rebounder, and Scotty Pippen and how they played with Jordan, you know, Jordan's all-star, but yet how they all accompanied, accompanied him and was like the still their great role, but yet able to let him be the guy and then take a step set a, a back seat in his fame, but yet still have their own time to shine in their own roles. Um, I, people always ask me who my, who I watched growing up, and I'm like, I really liked how Dennis Rodman would rebound. And everyone's shocked by that answer because they're like, great answer. because Katie Matera or Katie Feenstra, I, you know, say that, and Dennis Rodman are probably the most polar opposite people <laughs> on the planet, but he was fun to watch rebound. Well, he had your hair color a few times. Yeah, a few oh times, yeah. a couple yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> he would have worked out really well on on uh, Think Pink nights because his head was pink yeah. about half of his career. Uh, he he was a a weirdo. I think that's the reason they. Well, you're not a weirdo. Why would you like a weirdo? But you're not right. worried about what he's doing I just off the court. It was court. just fun to watch him play. Yeah, basketball yeah. is just a small world. Yeah, so it doesn't really the love of basketball. Uh, love for your craft and what you do. And there's few people that are known for rebounding. And if your mindset is rebounding, and if you've been around Coach Green for more than 25 seconds, your mindset better be rebounding. Better be rebounding. Maybe that's why he recruited me. Because you like Dennis Rodman. Because I like Dennis Rodman right. and rebounding. <laughs> yeah. That wouldn't surprise me, actually. Yeah, yeah. I should go ask him. I think a little bit more than that, though. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, yeah. It, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess it's just a little bit more than your your interest in Dennis Rodman. Where is he? We should yeah. ask him. Yeah, you like Char- <laughs> you like Charles Barkley too. He was a good rebounder. Oh, yeah. So those are the two guys I think of when I think of rebounding, and they just kind of had a nose for where the basketball was going to go, and realize that it's not just about boxing out. So, I mean, it is that's important. Don't get me wrong, but it's about angles and knowing that if a shot's from. 30 feet that the the chances are the rebound's going to be a lot longer than if a guy's shooting from 10 feet you know you just kind of factor all that stuff in so there's a lot of math involved in basketball that that i think the average player doesn't even realize we talked about that before i definitely don't realize it (laughs) are you guys whenever we're on the bench you you hear us and we're winning or losing. I, and Emma Hess is like right by me. I'm like, Emma, what are we winning by? And oh, she yeah, has yeah, to do yeah. the math because I just. <laughs> so math is not the. It's our thing now. It's oh. the thing. Even in the timeout at uh, New Mexico and Utah, she'd sit beside me and she's like, we're up 15. <laughs> <laughs> 
we so, do, man. Okay, that's uh, well, we won't get into into any uh, like long division or no. anything like that. <laughs> we talked before we came on about. And I was just joking. You asked if there going to be any tough questions. I was like, yeah, I'm going to say how far you guys can go out to pi, like how many digits out from pi you can do. And there's some Guinness World Record where a guy can go like 10,000 digits out from pi, which who, who knows why anybody would spend their life accomplishing that. But, uh, yeah, communications people, not really into the maths either. That's what. Did you know that in England they say maths? We say yeah. math, and they say maths. Did not know that. Just an interesting fact. fact. You learn something new every day. <laughs> Absolutely unnecessary, but uh, <laughs> maybe interesting. Well, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to see what you guys do when you're completely unassociated with basketball. What makes you tick away from the gym? Hmm. Right after this on the Liberty Flames Women's Basketball Show. Welcome back into this week's Liberty Flames Women's Basketball Show. We're joined by Katie Matera and Andy Bloodworth, assistant coaches for the Lady Flames. We were going into the break talking about what you guys do off the court. And I know normally the things that you talk about when you're not on the air, like when you know we're, we're in this little segment getting a drink of water and getting ready for the next bit, you're not really supposed to talk about what we were talking about, but I'm going to talk about what we were talking about because you both said, I don't really have a life. <laughs> you're not supposed to admit that. <laughs> no, no, I, uh, I apologize. I let, I let the secret out of the bag. But that's not true. I mean, everybody... Some people... No, no one really thinks that their life's fans, you know, fascinating unless you're... Matthew McConaughey, you're probably not going to think that your life is fascinating, but there's interesting things about everybody. And Andy, we'll start with you. I know uh, that you are. Uh, Did you hear her say good? <laughs> <laughs> pressure is off. No, uh, because your your family. I got to meet your family, your, your mom and dad, when we went to Israel. So you are really close to your your uh, relatives, and then you've also got uh, there's I think a new puppy. Uh, I don't know if he's is he still a pup? Is it a she or he? Uh, it's a she. Is she is she still a puppy or is she his? She just turned one, so she's still a puppy. Okay. Yep. Tell us tell us about the new pup. Um. Okay. Well, you, you encompassed a lot there, <laughs> family, and uh, <laughs> so uh, my family still lives in Michigan. So um, I really don't get to see them, but about maybe three times a year or so, um, just being busy with season and, and whatnot, whether it's recruiting or um, we have our small breaks here and there. Um, I did a little birthday present to myself after, I think it was our first my first year here, and uh, got myself a dog, um, adopted a dog. So I had her, um, her name was Honey, just random. Um, didn't have any names picked out, but she was kind of the color of Honey. So okay. it just kind of was like, oh, you look like honey. Ooh, that might be an interesting name. So, um, yeah. That's had a her, compliment. Yes. There you go. <laughs> um, I had her for 15 years, 15 and a half years. So I had to put her down a little over a year, about a year and a half ago. Um, she was just, it was time. It was She was old, lived a good life. Now, um, you had her for 15 and a half years. How old was she? She was like a year and a half old. No, she was 15 and a half years old, so I had her for like 14. Okay, gotcha. I think gotcha. it was. Um, again, years run together. Uh, yep, so I was without a dog for a while, and then I just kind of started getting an itch uh, last year in the spring, about not quite a year ago, and um, was looking around, and I kind of liked the idea of a non-shedding dog. <laughs> um <laughs> It was kind of nice uh, when once Honey was wasn't with me anymore of not not having a bunch of hair on me all the time. Um, so I was looking at some doodles and I actually found a doodle place here in town, New London Doodles, and they have a lot of puppies out there. So I uh, got her from out there, and she is about a year old. Her name is Reese. She just looked like a Reese peanut butter cup. I don't know. I just like the food. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Um, Subconsciously. We're Actually, all thinking about food. You help me with yeah. names. I was like, I don't know what kind of name. Like, I'm not going to know until I see her. But then also Katie and I were looking we went at... through a list. We were looking through, like, lists of names. So it's like baby names yeah. almost. Yeah, it pretty much. That, it was on the computer online. Yep. And, well, so. and it's uh, a doodle? Like a... What, what's the... A kind? Labradoodle. Oh, so a Labrador and a poodle? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So that'll be a. Pr- I mean, she's going to be pretty big when she's finished, isn't she? She. Some are big. Um, golden doodles are usually a little bigger because uh, those are golden retriever with uh, poodles. Um, her parents were a little bit smaller, so she's only like th- between thirty and forty pounds, and she's. Okay. I don't know. Some, she's somewhere between there now, like in the low side. So she's good size. So a Labrador doesn't shed. Poodles. The poodle part. Labs is shed what, like crazy. Okay, that's what. I, so the poodle takes over. Yeah. And doesn't allow the combination to shed. Somehow. That's. So you were looking for a non-shedding. Because when my my sister lived with me while she was in college, and after she was gone, you know, when she was finishing up, I was looking for a non-shedding human. Because, <laughs> You just don't realize when somebody's got long. I mean, my hair is longer than average, but her hair was really long. And I went through a lot of uh, vacuum cleaners. And I said, why do these vacuum cleaners keep clogging up and dying? The motors blow out on them. And I'm looking through and there's just, it's amazing how much you guys shed. Thank you. Thank you. That's a compliment. That's a compliment. So yes, dog and um, my family. I have uh, I mentioned my sister before, um, Tracy. So she's uh, three years older than me, and uh, my parents are still up in Michigan. And then my sister has two kids, so I have a niece and nephew. Ah, uh, well. how much? When you get to see the niece and nephew, how much do you spoil them? Because it's kind of the same the same concept of grandparents. I, I same way. My, my I've got a little niece. And you get to be a part of all the cool things, but then when it starts to get a little rough, you just get to leave. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> um, I'm not really a spoiler. I don't know. Um, you are. I am? Mm-hmm. You just asked Tracy if Lainey wanted a sweatshirt. Oh. Well, it was her birthday. <laughs> Oh, okay. And I'm so great with presents. Like, I do like to give presents, but I'm just so, like, especially one season, when we're in season, I'm terrible with being on time so it'll be a surprise later well that's i mean i think that's a not necessarily a bad thing if someone came up to me it's we're as we're having this conversation it's early march Mm -hmm. if someone came up to me and said hey here's a christmas present i didn't get to see you at christmas i would be like oh cool yes spread this out a little bit that's not bad yeah yeah that's really actually what i'm trying to do yeah yeah just give them something to be happy about a little while uh (laughs) after the fact if they're listening, they understand now. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, you uh, do you have it? Do, does you you and your family have any animals? Uh, yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> oh. We have two dogs. We used to have a cat. Um, Did, is the dogs the reason you don't have a cat? No. So this is a fun fact. <laughs> um, my rookie year in the WNBA, I was very lonely. You know, just by myself, new town. Just, which town? Which town? That was, was in San Antonio. That was San Antonio. Okay. You know, and just what do you do? You know, and um, all my teammates were getting these puppies, and they got these puppies from the same litter, whatever. They ended up having like tons of fleas, like Ooh. tons of fleas, and I'm like, yeah, definitely not gonna do that. And then <laughs> um, I'm I'm kind of cheap. I don't like to spend a lot of money. I'm kind of cheap. And um, they had, every time we went on a road trip, they're spending tons of money on dog sitters. I'm like, why would you do that? So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, got a lot of time on my hands after practice, not a whole lot to do. I'm like, I should get a cat. Never had a cat before, ever. So the season ends, come back to Lynchburg for my fifth, f- fifth semester, fifth year, my last semester, and a uh, pet aquatic warehouse on Ward's Road <laughs> had cats. And this really cool looking cat, she was assigned me. She had blue eyes. Oh. Beautiful cat. I'm like, I'm going to get that cat. And so I, I bought this cat from Pet, Pet, Pet Aquatic Warehouse in 2005. Um, and she just died in, when did she die? Uh, Was it the past fall? Yeah, in the fall? November. So December 16. December 16, she died. So she made it. 18 years? Yes, 18 years, Jamie. Wow. <laughs> That's, uh, it was a 
great cat. Um, but I didn't. I, I when the when people say to do research before you get an animal, you really should do research before you get an animal because Siamese cats are very temperamental. Um, they only choose one person that they really really like. Oh. Um, and so if it's your next door neighbor, you're really me. up a creek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she obviously chose me. She loved me. Would let me do whatever I wanted with her. Um, she start, but then I traveled overseas to play, and I'm like, now I got this cat. Who's gonna take care of this cat? So Mary Beth and Seth took care of her for one off season, and they're like, never again. <laughs> um, so then my parents would take her, and my mom hated her. But then she started warming up to my dad because my dad is very calm not loud you know so then she attached herself to him um, but then you you know i have kids now and they want to hold this cat hate and she wouldn't let them t come near her then i you throw the husband into the mix and so now like this this husband is gonna stay here with us abby like he's <laughs> gonna stay with us you gotta <laughs> like him um but yeah so that's kind of a long drawn out story but i had a cat for about 18 years <laughs> It's it's funny that you say that because I think some some dogs can have that a little bit of that same tendency. Yeah. My mom has a dog, and it's a I, I call it a yowzer. That is not correct, but it is a Yorkie and a Schnauzer, and I think it's a yowzer makes more sense than Schnauzer. Snort? No, it's a it, it, Schnauzer. Schnauzer. We grew up with Schnauzers. Okay, so it's a Yorkie. Snorky. A snorky. Oh. Right? Snorky. I don't know. I just said Snor that. A, a schnauzer and a yorkie, and I say it should be a yowzer, but it's the other way. It's a, it's a snor snorky okay. or a snorkel or something like that. I don't know. It's huh. it's a cute little dog, and, uh, and and he likes to hang out with other dudes. Wow. So when, when I come into town, he... R r gravitates to me of course i also bring treats with me so that probably helps a little bit but he wants to sleep with in, you know in my room he wants to hang out with me and mom's like i'm the one that feeds you and takes you out you know 364 days a year and then he comes in and you act like i'm not even here anymore so there's it's a little bit of a bone of contention but i'm not the, i'm he kind of wants to hang out with other guys which is interesting so, yeah so he sort of picks Yep. Yeah, I don't need you know. I don't know. It's it's so she's as not Abby happy got about older. That. I think she was going senile, and she would she would let people touch her and sit on their lap and stuff. But I think she was kind of crazy. See, in humans, it's kind of the opposite. Yeah. Usually, when someone is that way, they don't want anybody to don't don't touch me. Yeah. Get away from me. You know, and because I wonder maybe if I'm starting to get a little senile because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> we should bother you more on the no. road and make you come out with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, it, there's like this comp and let's ask this question to you guys. There's this kind of combination of you can, you don't have to just be an introvert or an extrovert. There can be sort of combinations. I think people expect that of either pets or humans. You either love hanging out with people all the time, or you want to be away from people all the time but i find that there's there's times where yeah i love hanging out but then there's other times where i need i need my space and yeah, yeah don't yeah leave me alone yeah how would you guys describe yourselves i think just like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> perfect i mean i think it changes too um as you get a little older like i think i'm definitely an extrovert but i I'm lower on the extrovert spectrum because I do enjoy my just chill alone time. I think we're around people so much and we're just coming off that long road trip from Tuesday to Saturday. And so when you get back, it's like, okay, all my people, people entertainment have come out from Tuesday to Saturday. So now I kind of just want to be by myself. Right. I feel like it's just the nature of our job too. And I, the girls are the same way. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to Bella before the trip and um she was excited about the trip and being around her teammates but then she's like i also have to find just time for myself just so i can like recharge and so i have enough energy for the games i just have to recharge you know so mid i don't know we were on the way to utep and i'm like did you find those times to recharge and she did but i think the girls are the same way that's a good way of putting it because there's some there's some big personalities not just on this year's team but 
over the years on your teams. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the same thing when you were playing. And if if you've got to live up to their energy when you're around them, then you're going to have to find some time to to recharge, like like Bella's saying. It, yeah. it, it's it's impossible. I'm trying to think of some examples over the years, but some players that if you were in the same building as them, the energy level of the build the building is D is a good example. It's like you couldn't be around D and not be just a little bit more you know up. You know you had to be a little bit higher up as far as your your energy level, and uh, so then then you got to go find the okay who who can I kind of chill out with. I mean, just have your own time when you're on space. Yeah, exactly. Um, we okay. So what what are some things? Like, okay, so we talked about the animals. You got the the, the, the kids and I have too, two dogs, and yeah. and so you. I'm sure your house can be totally chaotic at yeah. times. <laughs> I love bit. when Katie has like sto- a story about anything. It's just, I love it. Yeah, it's a little chaotic. House is not big by any means. Some speeches coming up you were telling us about? Yep. My nine-year-old, he's, he goes to LCA. He's in the fourth grade. Um, all of fourth grade, they have these famous American speeches, second semester of school. Uh, so, you know, and they they send out an email, right? And they say, let's just say, Tuesday at four o'clock, the blast is going to come out to all the fourth grade parents, and you got to sign up for your famous American who your kid's going to, who your kid wants to be. And of course, at four o'clock, I'm in practice. <laughs> so I got the managers over by my phone. <laughs> when it's four o'clock, you've got to tell me because I have to find this email and get to the, his famous American immediately so he can get which, which one he wants. Who did he want? Well, he wanted Michael Jordan, and okay. I wasn't quick enough because I was in practice. Uh. And Todd's at home. He could have done this. But American but, American history class has Michael Jordan as well, one of the most... Well, it's a famous American. So, like, there's all... I mean, amongst so all... So, they could have got Taylor Swift. If she was on the list. I don't think she would have oh, been okay. on the list. Gotcha. I think it would have to be retired. At 30. <laughs> yeah. She could be. <laughs> um, so, he got Walt Disney. So, we've been oh. studying the life of Walt Disney since Christmas. And then it ends with a speech... So tomorrow is his speech. And he, he does is. a speech that Walt Disney did at some no, point. No, it's a speech about Walt Disney. Oh, a speech, speech about Walt mm-hmm. Disney. Can about you clear, life. now that you've studied Walt Disney for the last uh, however many weeks, can you clear up a, an urban legend? Is his head frozen? Yes. <laughs> it was not in the 100 page book that we had to read. It was not mentioned. So I cannot tell you about it. Oh, do, do you know the answer or you, you, or you, you don't it says know? It doesn't, I know. You don't know the answer. No. Well, I don't see know how the can answer. I feel like you you would need to know if the man is frozen before you do a speech about him. <laughs> Maybe uh, we didn't we didn't I didn't want to explain that to my nine year old son, <laughs> so we skipped Bad. it. Bad. We went straight to Epcot. There's a lot of people. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, no, this I was gonna say. Isn't there like an exhibit for Iceland and in, in inside of Epcot? That would kind of tie the two oh, together. Maybe, maybe Walt's just hanging out maybe over I, in Iceland. Yeah, maybe he's over there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people that didn't realize that was even a thing that are listening to the podcast right now, and Google is going crazy with is Walt, is Walt Disney's, Disney's head, head frozen? frozen? Yeah. Or maybe it's his whole body. I don't even know. Ted Williams was another one that there was always rumors that his family had him frozen whenever he died. Wow. So. I don't know. Technology gets good enough, then all of a sudden we've got a 400 hitter in baseball again because put him back out there. I'd rather just be with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Fair enough. I like that. I like that. Um, all right, last thing. The two of you have gone on hundreds of road trips between playing days, coaching days, and just family trips and things. I'm, I'm going to exclude Israel because I feel like anybody that has any connection to Liberty Women's Basketball, that's always going to be the answer to the question of what is your favorite road trip or the coolest place you've ever been. So let's eliminate that for a moment. And um, I'm, not, I'm going to start with Katie because she should be the easiest because of you just said that you, you lived in China for oh. Quite a while, so there's got to be she some said, cool oh, stories. That wasn't a road trip. I lived there. <laughs> right. Well, originally it was a. I guess. So. I guess it wasn't a road. <laughs> um, I wouldn't even thought about those places, honestly. Um, 
I guess. I mean, I went. To, I've been to Russia, and the the area that we were in was beautiful. Like with all like the, you think of a rush, a picture of like all the buildings and all the colors and the little twirly twos on top of buildings. <laughs> whatever you call those. Like um, little yeah, peppermint you, sticks yeah, or whatever. whatever. You call those. Yeah. Um, those were really pretty, but I don't know if it was my favorite place to be. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I'll say something. Well, what Korea. was China like? China, um, it, it was, it was, um, not very Americanized at where we were, you know, I, where I was, when I traveled to Shanghai and Beijing and the bigger towns, and yeah, that was awesome. But I didn't live there, so it was harder to find Americanized food. They yelled at me that I was losing too much weight, and I'm like, well, you feed me fish and rice. <laughs> um, but um, I loved my time in China. I'm not going to say that. Like, my teammates were incredible. My coaches were tra- treated me very, very well. Um, you played charades for about seven months because you had a translator, and sometimes a translator wouldn't know how to speak very well um so i just played charades for about seven months and i couldn't say their names so i came up with nicknames for them nice and then it's kind of fun it would be like coach green calling zero zero or red red you know um our coach would start calling the players by my nicknames (laughs) so they he so i knew who he was talking about um but to answer your question my favorite part my favorite place to be i would say south korea that was kind of fun because you, you had your, it was called Itaewon. You had your Americanized where all the Americans would go. Um, and then you were close enough to different teams that you could get together with the other Americans and um, have dinner. And yeah, I guess that was my, that was, that would be probably one of my favorite places in Seoul. That's cool. I'm sure the food in all of these places, other than maybe it wasn't, maybe there wasn't enough portions for us Americans, but uh yeah. All the food probably very fresh and very. Like markets that you can go to and yep. see and make it right in front of you. Yep. Kind of, the head was always still on the fish. <laughs> well, <laughs> we had that in Israel as well. Ah, and, so that's when people yeah, were freaking out fish. over that. I'm yeah. like, oh, this is no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if this was, we were having steak. Yeah, that would be Stop. terrible. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's... Uh, I think it was it was Elizabeth or Emma was saying that in Iceland that they have a is it's, it's a sheep isn't I it? I just watched that yeah. inter- interview with them yeah, the other day uh, and I was laughing. I was like, Ooh. He said, "Who was it?" They said that they eat the eyeballs. Yeah. And, and Elizabeth said yes, and then Emma's like, "You do that?" And she said, "No, I don't." <laughs> <laughs> if you're a vegetarian, can you eat an eyeball? I don't think so. Right? I, I would say no. That's probably. I mean, even though yeah, it's not no, meat, well, that's gross. It's no, not even talking about that. yeah, it's gross. <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> yeah, Andy, how about you? Okay, so are you talking about like favorite place ever to go visit, or are you talking about basketball oriented? You, you tell me. Um, because I really haven't outside of basketball, I really haven't traveled that much. Um, so Israel definitely would have been my place, um, but you ixnade that one. Um, other than that, going outside the country, um, Canada is the only other place I've been. And Emily would like that answer. What's that? Emily would. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so that would be one thought. Um, and I went to, when I was finishing college, I had uh, some, a couple of my good friends were getting married and they were from um, Calgary, which oh. is actually where Efi, who's coming in next year, um, lives. Um so that was super fun to go out there for, I don't even remember, like a week or so, went to the wedding, and um, one lived out there, um, and so everybody stayed at her house, and we went and toured a little bit after the the couple got married. Um, so there's some really beautiful lakes uh, up there, so that was really cool. Um, Summertime, and, I'm assuming? Yes, it was. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. So, uh, like, from where you guys live, like summers June. are great, you know? Like, if it, yeah. they only last for three weeks, but summer is... <laughs> Maybe up there. <laughs> beautiful, you know? Michigan, and we get good. We get a good... You get, you get, you get got a couple months, right? Just, just shorter. Yeah. Um, so, we... Um, Basketball-wise, I was trying to think of what that would be. I mean, maybe, like... Las Vegas. 
Oh, I mean, that's I have a cousin that lived there when we played there a couple times, so I didn't I forget to see her. So that was kind of fun to reconnect with her when we did have uh, games there years ago. Um, and then maybe when I played, like my senior year, we went out and I played at a um, a school in Michigan. Um, I think it was over Christmas. We went out to like the Masters in California, and so we went to. I think we drove down like Rodeo Drive, and that's oh. like. When Pretty Woman, the, mu- the the movie was out, and that was one of my favorites. So like, oh, Rodeo Drive, yeah, that's cool. But that that's was, funny. and I and we went to Universal um, one day, so that was kind of that was kind of fun. So for all the craziness that goes on in California and Hollywood and all that, there's some really beautiful scenery and and the mountains in the backdrop and and the ocean. I mean, you can stand and see the ocean, and you turn that way, and there's a mountain range. It's, it's, it is a beautiful it's part pretty. of the country. Yeah. Well, it was really cool to kind of get go behind the scenes a little bit, and we really didn't, other than behind like backyard basketball, we didn't talk any X's and O's, and we didn't worry about rebounds or free throw percentages or any of that stuff. Uh, although, who, between the two of you, who would win a free throw shooting contest? Andy. Okay. Who, <laughs> okay. Who would win a, a game of horse? Andy. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Andy does it all. I, <laughs> She's the glue on the office. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's I a used nickname. to do more shooting, but I really haven't done, done much shooting the last couple of years. Oh, we're going to have to make this happen. We're going to have a, a coaching staff horse competition for. Yeah, that's going to be all Alexis. He shoots all the time, he still plays. That's true. All right, we'll have to throw something else in there that uh, would. would Kind of knock him down a peg. And he can only shoot layups and horse. I will just give him a blindfold. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, oh, see what you can do with this on. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate Thanks you guys. Thanks so much for having us.